Tony Robbins is perhaps one of the country's best known motivational speakers and life strategists. And during tough times like these, a little strategy can't hurt. And a little cheering as well. Well, Tony was here earlier this morning talking about using fear to your advantage. And now he's back to answer your email questions. Hey, Tony, thanks for sticking around. Thank you. Well, let's get right to it because we've got Lisa in Virginia and she's trying to stay positive. She writes, it's hard enough to keep myself positive in the way the markets are going these days, but it's even harder when my husband is very nervous and is making me more nervous too. How do I deal with the situation? when I'm having to keep both of us from worrying too much? Well, I'd say the first thing you've got to do is educate yourself. Um, and what I mean by that is educate yourself about people who have done well in these tough times. Because mm. it's happened before. I mentioned earlier Sir John Templeton, the greatest investor of all time. He made all of his money when markets were crashing. So I put him on our site, thepowerofcrisis.com. And you can go watch that. Let your husband watch it. You watch and educate yourself. Second thing is, I've been coaching for 16 years now, one of the top 10 financial traders of all time. He's an amazing man. He writes me every single day. I coach him once a week or once every two weeks. So I called him last night because this is a man who in 1987, when the market crashed, he made a half a billion dollars that day when everybody's afraid. Mm. So let me tell you what he said. He said two things. In the short term, he predicted what was going to happen today. He said, I think we can have some rallies, but he said, I don't think it's the bottom yet. In fact, I think it could go down another 20 to 30%, could even be 40. Now, a lot of people hear that and freak yeah, out. Yeah, that's not very uplifting, yeah. Tony. <laughs> no, but it is. Robert Prechter is a man who's a friend of mine also. He wrote a book in 1978 where he said the biggest bull market's coming yeah. when we were at 800. Mm. It's gone 14 times that on the Dow. I called him up and he said, look, Tony, think of it this way. Stocks that were $50 are now selling for 10 or even 5 there's a great chance, based on what happened in the 30s, even what happened in the 70s, some of those will sell for $5, they'll go down to one, or even 25 cents. Mm. But here's what happened in the 30s and in the 70s. In a six month period, if you were at 25 cents, it's not gonna go back to $50, but it might go to five. That's a 2,000% return that could happen in six months. People you know that if you stay strong and smart, save your money, be intelligent, this could be the greatest opportunity since you've been alive. Not being positive based on real history. So what you're really talking about then is just having kind of a grit. And I think that, you know, we forget how much grit we have. I agree with you. Especially because we get so comfortable in the life that we think is going to always stay the same. That's right. And what we have to remember is we are human beings who have tremendous grit and yeah. in this country we've proven that and it's it's tough now it's hard however to explain this to your children we've got a good question here from Hannah she's from Massachusetts she writes um, my children watch the news every morning how do I make sure that they know what's going on in this crisis but don't get them scared about their lives and our family's welfare this is a big issue it's a, it's a great question um, I think you have to understand what we flood ourselves with we experience mm -hmm. right now if you turn on the television it's bread lines and people say sell everything and they even may be right but for your children they need resiliency they need to know there's a compelling future and the best way to do that for frankly, is not just to protect them, but to show them examples of people that have been through it all. Mm. So Casey, who was on your show today, mm. you know, this young man lost his arm mm. and he's as happy as he can be, totally excited about his life and trying to help other people. So again, uh, I'm not just plugging it, but I want, I created this community called thepowerofcrisis.com. People go there from all over the world and they share their stories. They were raped and they transformed. They lost everything financially. And at the end of it, they'll tell you how I'm better today. If I know at the time I didn't want it to happen, but if it hadn't, I wouldn't be who I am today. I'm happier. I'm stronger. I'm richer inside and I think if kids hear enough examples of like that it starts to stick whatever you feed them they're gonna experience so you've got to feed in those great examples my dad always told me that tough times are gonna make you stronger That's, right. That's the, always a thing to say okay rich uh, Roger from New York he worries that his own worry has gone beyond his control he writes what what do I do when I feel the fear paralysis that happens when my mind starts to run wild it seems like there is a cascade of doom and gloom thoughts and I can't seem to take any action I just worry you know People who are not used to having that emotion are having it yeah. these days. Well, we've all had it at different times of our lives. We just forget. And I mm. think what he has to do is, what's a time in your life that you had an enormous crisis, but what pulled you through? Again, we have people go through on that site and answer five questions. And what it basically does is help you figure out where was this crisis before you may have even forgotten about. What pulled you through? What belief? What strategy? What experience? Who helped you? What triggered you? And then what did you do? that made that shift. But I would also say, remember one affirmation, if you would, in your mind, and your body, own the fact that money is not your life. This is just money. I mean, when I was told I had a tumor in my brain, later on, years later, when I thought I might lose my wife to cancer, I'm gonna tell you something, money doesn't matter at all. But when we get focused on what matters most, we're there. So I mentioned earlier, getting physical is really important because fear is a physical thing. So you sit around and think saying. about it, not just exercise, going for an intense run, lifting weights, something that pumps the blood and mm. oxygen through you. Because when you do that, your entire psychology changes. You see the world through a different place. So I'd say it's contrast of other people's great stories, 
model the best that's in you. When have you been through these things before? You've been resilient, if you're honest with yourself, and get totally physical and make that a ritual for you. And then you'll start to look for role models of how to turn things around. Can I add one? Yes, please. Hug people. Oh, just I love that. Well, hug, come here. Come here. <laughs> hug people. And just, you know, and embrace embrace human beings who are all around you and make sure that you're a good friend so that they can be a good friend to you and I, you'll feel better I think the most important thing you do is get outside yourself if you go out to try to help somebody else we have a basket brigade and we feed three million people a year at Thanksgiving from all over the world and it's because somebody fed my family when you go out and help somebody else you realize you have no problems you realize how and lucky you feel you like are. you have something to give and we all need meaning in our life we don't want to just get the life now is about what can you give that's what will light you up Tony Robbins I'm feeling lucky because I got a <laughs> hug from you today <laughs>